Hey, good evening everybody. Tim Walsh coming to you live from the University of Illinois Fire Service Institute. Where tonight, we're going to be talking about propane fires and how to put them out and how to manage them on the fire ground. So we're going to let you get signed in. We've posted tonight's handout in the comments section. Take a look at us. Follow us along. Let us know where you're watching from. And I'll be moderating tonight's uh, lecture and uh, hands-on series. So if you have questions, just put them in the comments section. I'll be watching the comment feed. So we'll let you get signed in. I'll be back with you in one minute. Hey, good evening everybody. Tim Walsh coming to you live from the Illinois Fire Service Institute on the campus of the University of Illinois, where tonight we're going to be delivering propane fires and how to put them out and how to manage them. First, let's call out our partners. Let's uh, call out IPER, Illinois Propane Education and Research Council. They fund propane classes for firefighters all across the state of Illinois for free. That's right, you heard me. We can take this show on the road, we can teach this program, and wherever you're located in the state of Illinois for no charge. Everybody's gonna respond to a propane fire, so you need to know how to do this. Or you can come down on our grounds where we're demonstrating tonight uh, with our bobtail uh, truck here and our vertical tank on how to operate. Let's also call out Elkhart Brass, Akron Brass, Task Force Tips, and Pierce Fire Trucks. All our sponsors and partners here at the Illinois Fire Service Institute that help us deliver these programs. And why are we delivering propane this week? It's because it's Farm Safety Week. Every farmer counts. So we have two programs, one specifically for propane delivery tonight, and then we also have our Ag Rescue uh, Grain Bin Awareness Program, which we posted on all our social media websites. So let's bring in Mark Clapp, who is the Director of Oil and Petroleum Gas Programs here at the Illinois Fire Service Institute. He's going to take us through our tools that we're going to be using tonight, and then we'll get some propane fires going for you. So uh, thanks for joining us. Remember, the comment section is open for your questions, and the handout is at the top of the comment section. Thanks for having us. Mark? Thank you, sir. Welcome, everybody. The Illinois Fire Service Institute LP Pad. We are actually going to start with some basic um, tools and equipment we have here. Uh, most of it, you're going to end up, it's going to flow water. That's what we're going to start looking at. So we start with this Akron um, turbojet, and one of the things that we start to play with, with all the nozzles, is understanding how it comes out uh, for us to get to up to our objects, our gases, and our liquids we may play with. So the spinner here creates that fog pattern that we need to be able to, um, to go up, capture, move, and, and get into our valving, and we'll show you that a little later. Um, the other nozzles we have here, we have a task force tip that basically is more of a rigid, so as it plays in its fog pattern, it's more fingers and that that are actually pushing. So you're gonna get a good push with this, where we may get a potential of a pull with this one here. So we'll try to play a little bit tonight to kind of show you how that goes off. And then an Elkhart cheap nozzle here, similar. It's, it's a rigid um, straight structure, so we're gonna get a good push out of it. The biggest things you have to look for on all your fog patterns and when you go back is what design does it give when it's a narrow fog to a full fog. Is it a bell shape that is coming out because you're still getting a push um, with that type of a fog nozzle compared to one that may be wider open and you'll get to the potential for actually drafting and pulling the product back into you. So you have to kind of pay attention to what you're doing with your fogs. Go look at all of them and, and then just play with them. Play with each one. The other device we got here tonight sitting up here is going to be the Elkhart um, Ram XD. It's more of an attack monitor, 500 gallons per minute. We also have a task force monitor we'll look at uh, later. We have it in play on the grounds for us. Again, we're looking at the size of the vessels, so we're actually trying to determine how much water we need. Well, NFPA and M calculate that for us. So we're going all the way over from here where it's 95 gallons to cool a vessel 
all the way up to this attack gun that can flow up to 500 gallons per minute to get something done for us. And realize we're not always just pointing there. If you had a defensive gun on your department, not an attack gun, put it on the ground. They can only go so low to the ground, but point them higher in the air and bring that back to you and do a rain down effect on the object you're trying to cool. That's one of the biggest things we have to do in the fire service for these type of vessels and everything we're gonna play with. It may look simple. It's a simple object. But when you're playing at that home uh, with a 20 pound cylinder or 500 gallon tank in the backyard, you really need a pair of vice grips or pliers so you can actually, once that aluminum hand wheel's melted down on top of the tank, you're just gonna grab the brass bonnet and be able to shut that off. For us in the fire service, we don't blow these out. The way to extinguish them is actually shutting them off. This becomes a very important tool for us when we walk up there. The other thing we have laying here, it may seem a little weird for LP, but it's a pipe pole. Something that you can reach out to actually obtain a, a quarter turn valve, or even grab a 20 pound cylinder that you're trying to cool in the backyard and your stream's kind of pushing it away. You can hold it with the pipe pole um, for you to be able to reach it, solve your problem, and isolate that. So I think the other thing we're gonna start moving, we're gonna start moving over and we're gonna look at the, um, the vessels and we'll walk you through a drill uh, to get something done here and really walk you into what we do. Thanks, Mark. So once again, I wanna thank uh, everybody that's watching tonight, uh, Ziegler Fire Department, uh, Corporal de Bomeros in Portugal. Hello to you guys out there. I know my Spanish is not that good from grade school, but it's the best I can do. We're letting Mark get dressed and the way we're gonna operate tonight, when we start letting these tanks behind me fly, with open propane, the bobtail and the vertical trailer, it's gonna get loud. So we're not gonna be able to talk on the microphone. So what we're gonna do is, before we let the propane fly, we're gonna demonstrate the considerations that you would make as a firefighter or a company officer when you pulled up to one of these two jobs. And we wanna show you how to operate. As Mark talked about, we can use uh, uh, combination nozzles to protect ourselves as we're operating, but we can also use a straight stream, but this is mostly a combination nozzle attack. So we'll be using an Elkhart brass nozzle and an Akron brass nozzle for this first demonstration, and then later we'll use the task force tip. Mark, are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, so Mark's gonna go over the, the, the procedures of how to operate as a company officer and the crews that he has. So we're gonna walk over and get set up here so my camera person can follow Mark and we can get your proper delivery. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So what we're set up here is we got crew members up here on the lines. We're gonna walk you through. So my two crew members are on the inside of the working line, so in case one of them fails, they just pass the line out. They're gonna step and hide behind the other crew because we're kind of walking into a W with our fog patterns when we, we start moving up. From this distance, we're gonna start out with a tighter stream, and we're just gonna open up as we actually come closer to the vessel itself. One of the other things is nonverbal. Once it gets loud out here, this will be my nonverbal for them. We are walking, we're walking. And constantly, if I let go of one, they're gonna stop and just do exactly what they're supposed to be doing, flowing water on the actual vessel to keep it cool. And so we get close enough to be able to come in with our patterns and kind of grab and move that flame where I need it to be to open those valves up for me. So we're gonna to continue to start walking, moving our way toward, you can do step, step, the industry likes to do. If you're a distance out, you can just get to the point walk. And we're gonna keep a steady walking pace so we don't trip each other. We're moving our way up in. They're cooling the vessels at this entire time, blowing water on them. And you're making sure you hit the top of that vessel so water gets to the back side as we approach one vessel here. So when we truly get to this position here, we're gonna control it. Then I would actually, as an officer, walk to the safest motion when we get here. And this is gonna be the pump that we're playing with tonight. The fire's gonna be coming off of that. And it's gonna be deflecting. It's gonna be moving around. Great, there's no wind tonight for us everybody. It's lucky for the environment. So we're gonna be able to play with this, come up and we'll cool, we'll get in, shut the valve off, and basically present you the first round with a, a kind of a delivery truck fire. Yeah, so that'd be great, Mark. So we're gonna get into the bobtail truck here. We're actually gonna light this off. Like I told you before, it's gonna get very loud. It's gonna get very hot. So we're gonna let the guys get geared up. Uh, obviously, a lot of fire departments don't use full PPE when they're fighting a, a propane fire. Please go by your local regulations and standard operating procedures. Tonight we're fully geared up so nobody gets hurt and that's the way we operate. We have a safety line and a safety crew on standby as well. So uh, let's get everybody geared up here. But once again, let's thank Elkhart Brass, Akron Brass, and uh, Task Force Tips for supplying the nozzles uh, for letting us go to work here. We've got a great night. We're going to get this lit up. Mark, are you ready to go? Yes, here we are. Okay, let's go, Tim. It's gonna get loud here now, so we won't be able to talk, and then Mark and I will come back and talk to you after we get this wire put out. 
But watch the way he directs his crew, watch the way he operates with his crew, and where he puts them, and how he adjusts those nozzles to protect those tanks from causing a blebby. We actually have safety valves on site. So one of them was just set for us to uh, um, control it while we were waiting. And now we're trying to reset it. We're going to get it lit here in a second. We'll be ready to go. Mark is the leader in this program here. He's been doing this for years. The way he manages his crews, the way he manages the nozzles, and the way he manages the fog streams. So we're going to let these guys get ungeared, and then we're going to talk about how we go to work on the vertical tank, which is over my left shoulder. So, hey Mark, when you, yes, get, a, when you get a breath, come on back in here and talk to me about why you were adjusting the nozzles and how you were working your crew in there just one time. Just a brief recap for me. Real quick, we were trying to get, make sure we had water on top of the vessels. We get closer, it gets higher for us, so we got to reach our patterns up. But we also be, have to be able to play what's trying to wrap around and play with us. We're not going to chase fireballs. We have to stay on the original source, which was the pump. But I have to get that pattern so it can capture, push that flame in a different direction to open that valve up, which you really couldn't see the valve underneath there. But that's what I was aiming for to get. That's why I had to walk out to the side, reposition, we got it. All right, so let's go ahead and get going on the vertical tank. Let's do the walkthrough first before we light it off. So we're going to walk through just like we did the first time. The vertical tank is simply a thousand gallon tank standing on its end. I'm getting in a similar position with everybody. We're going to say go. We're going to start walking. They're cooling water from the top of the vessel, letting it shed itself down. Our goal is to make sure we get it all the way over so it's on the back side as we continue to approach. As we get up here, it's got a different little flame on it. It's got torch flame or compared to something just being lazy underneath of it. So what we got to do is isolate those flames from the two spots. That's what we're going to try to do. We're going to actually cool them, get on those containers, see if I can get the valve, and then I'm going to be able to actually shut and isolate the valves down, and then we'll slowly back out again. It's all about cooling those containers, keeping those containers in that fashion where I can honestly get in here. So with this setup, problem right here, problem at the top. So one's in a liquid space. If I had a full tank, One's in a vapor space. The vapor space concerns me more than the liquid. Valves for us to shut. We're going to be set to go. We'll touch these valves as we start to get this project done. All right, so as we back away before they light this tank off, we're going to make sure that we get 
get everything in service here and we get everybody's PP on. We're going to back up a little bit further with my camera person. Uh, Mark, you ready to go? Like I said before, this is going to get very loud, even more loud than the bobtail. And we're going to have the ability not to talk to you during this. So if you have a question or a comment, type it in the comment section and we'll get ready to roll here. never turning their back to the tanks, either the bobtail or the vertical uh, tank. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Then we had one question come up too. Why is it better to use a fog nozzle? So let me get Mark on gear here and we'll bring him over and he can talk about that. I'm sure most departments have combination nozzles uh, on their rig, but there's a specific reason we're using fog nozzles for this. Hey Mark, I got a question for you before we move into the last demonstration. Okay. Can you please talk about why a fog nozzle is preferred to a straight stream or a smooth board? Okay, so even from a straight stream aspect, it's basically the finely divided particles we're playing with. I have to open that up so we can actually start to play with the gas. As you saw in a couple here, kind of wanted like, almost like I think of it filling a bucket. So if we're taking something here with our fog pattern, we're going into it against it, that would be a loser because it would fill the bucket up. So I'd rather come against it and play with it. I just widen it out to push it, to kind of grab it, to play with me compared to a straight stream is going to go right through it. So the gas is going to push right through it, then I'm not really doing anything. I'm trying to whip it to get something done. It's not practical to do that. So if we can do it on this next go around, we'll try to suck it in for you so you can see it on the cameras. It gets a little darker here. But as we play with this and bring it back to us, it's simply playing with the fog. If I need to move it where I want it, let me play with it with my nozzle. That's how I win. That's how I can compete with the product playing with me on the other side. It's atmospherically controlled, everybody. The temperature outside is going to help that propane grow and expand when you're trying to release it from the container. And we're playing with the liquid tonight um, out here on our site. So again, you're seeing white out here on the other end, and it looks like the, it's basically it's the moisture in the air is crystallized because of minus 44 degrees. That's what we have to play with. The propane comes out of the container when it boils. So playing with that, we're going to get in here and we'll try to play with it. Maybe build you guys some ice on this go around and see what we can get. All right, so this last demonstration we're going to show you is going to include the Task Force Tip uh, Blitzfire. It's also going to include the two hand lines, one from Elkhart and uh, one from Akron Brass. So we've covered all of our sponsors tonight to show you all their products and how they benefit you on the fire ground. So we're going to have three lines on the fire tonight. We're just going to wait for Mark to get geared up here. And we're going to have the bobtail rolling and the vertical uh, gas tank rolling as well because that can really happen when they're transferring fuel from one uh, mobile delivery product to a fixed delivery, which happens in every town. So take a look at how we operate this, and let's get going here, okay?
All right, so a real key consideration that Mark talked about early in the program, and it's in your handout, is we have to move in control under protection of the fog nozzle to shut that main valve off. We can't just let the product flow everywhere because it's going to find another ignition source. So we have to shut the tank off, whether it's on the bobtail, over my right shoulder, or the vertical tank over the left shoulder. And that's really no different than your 20 gallon, uh, 20 pound LP tank that you use on your grill at home. We've got to shut the valve off. And that's why the uh, pike pole is so important because if you hit that with a straight stream when you move into the backyard and you knock it off its pedestal, it's going to be shooting all over the yard because it comes out of there underneath the pressure. So let's bring Mark back in and we're going to kind of hit the highlights of what we talked about today, right? The, the stuff that you should always do when you pull up on an LP fire. Mark? Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. The biggest thing you do when you have a container involved is make sure you cool the container. The smaller the container, still meets a smaller amount of water. Don't come in there with a, a stream so strong that it does. It creates like a beach ball and you blow it all over the backyard for yourself. Cool the vessel. Water on the steel, 212 degrees. You know it's staying cool there because water boils at 212 degrees. Keep that theory in mind as you keep the tanks cool and the vessels cool. And then check out all your fog streams in that and see how they actually play before you arrive on the scene of a real event so you know what it's going to do with the product in front of you. Mark, thanks a lot for a great training tonight. Thank you, sir. Along with your crew. We can't thank IPERC enough, Illinois Petroleum and Education and Research Council. This training is free. If you're a firefighter in the state of Illinois and you haven't attended this training, or your chief officer who's sitting out the couch at home eating a bag of chips right now hasn't signed up for this class yet, which is free, you guys are making a big mistake. We want to be able to provide free training for firefighters all across the state of Illinois that is a good, impactful class that doesn't cost city management anything. So listen, it's Farm Safety Week. We forgot to talk about that again. Every farmer counts. Take a look at the Grain Bin Awareness Training that we put on all our social media pages. This is not only for firefighters, this is for farmers and their families so that no one gets injured. We've had 40 Grain Bin deaths in, in the country this year because of the wet harvest last year. We'll see what the harvest is going to be here in Illinois in a couple weeks, but it's very important to take a look at that. Thanks again to our sponsors, Pierce Fire Trucks, Elkhart Brass, Akron Brass, and Task Force Tips. In two weeks, we'll be back with you with uh, Toby Jackson and the Smoke Divers, where we'll be dumping our tanks and learning how to get out of a jam inside a fire building so that you can survive. We look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Thanks for joining us from the Illinois Fire Service Institute tonight on the University of uh, Illinois campus, and uh, take care of each other.